You have a lot of options when it comes to powering your Arduino projects, so many that it can get confusing, especially when you're first starting out. In this video, I'm going to explain the various options and when to use them, with a focus on the Arduino Uno R3 and R4. However, much of the information in this video also applies to other Arduino models. The first and most common power source you will use is a USB cable. If you are just getting started with an Arduino and going through tutorials on things like how to blink an LED and use a button, this is what you will use to connect your Arduino to the computer to program it anyway, so it's also what you will use to provide power. And it is more than adequate to provide power for many things you'll find in common Arduino starter kits like buzzers and small servo motors. It's not going to be enough for larger projects like robots with lots of motors, but we'll talk about that a little later in the video. For now, we'll talk about the different types of USB cables because the type you need will depend on your Arduino model and your computer. If we zoom in on the two Arduino boards, we will see that the Uno R3 has a USB-B connector, also called a printer cable. On the newer Arduino Uno R4, this has been replaced with a slimmer USB-C connector, which is what you will find on many modern smartphones. The other end of the cable can be a USB-A connector, which is this rectangular plug that you will find on many computers, but some newer computers, especially laptops, might only have USB-C ports and not any USB-A ports, in which case you will need either a USB-A to C adapter or a cable that just has USB-C on the other end instead of USB-A. These USB cables are very convenient, again, especially when you are first getting started doing Arduino tutorials with things like LEDs, buttons, and switches, but eventually you might want to get your Arduino project out there into the world and not leave it plugged into your computer all the time. That is where USB chargers come in very handy. You can take pretty much any cell phone charger or USB charging station or an outlet with a built-in USB port and just take your USB cable, unplug it from your computer, and plug it into the charger, and your Arduino will operate just the same, running the same code, even though it is no longer plugged into a computer. However, this is where we need to be a little careful and start talking about current. If you look very closely at this charger, you will see that it is rated for an output of 5 volts and 2 amps. However, that does not mean that if I plug a USB cable into this charger and then plug in my Arduino, that I can get two amps out of my Arduino. The Uno R3 has a 500 milliamp, so that's half an amp fuse connected to the USB port. So that 500 milliamps is more than enough, again, when you're using tiny parts like LEDs that only draw about 20 milliamps each, or maybe a single small motor that might draw one or 200 milliamps, but if you are going to try and build a project with lots and lots of motors, again, that 500 milliamps is not enough. So you cannot just take something like a tablet charger that might be even more like three or four amps and assume that will give you enough current through the Arduino because you're still going to be limited by the fuse on the USB port. So again, we'll talk a little more about powering motors later in the video. Point being, be careful. You can use these chargers to power your Arduino, but you're not going to get this much current out of what it says on the charger because you're still limited by that onboard fuse on the Arduino. That brings us to our next option, which will allow you to get a little more current, powering the Arduino through the barrel jack connector with a wall adapter. You might have a ton of these adapters sitting around that you've accumulated from various electronic devices, but you need to be careful and read the label on it before you just go ahead and plug it into your Arduino. So let's take a look and zoom in and see what is going to be compatible with powering your Arduino. First, you need to make sure you have the correct physical dimensions of the plug. This is a 2.1 millimeter inner diameter by 5.5 millimeter outer diameter barrel plug. And if you make sure that the other end is not plugged into a wall outlet, you can just test and make sure that it physically fits into your Arduino. Again, these come in all shapes and sizes. For example, here is a narrower one that doesn't fit. So make sure the plug fits before you try anything else. Next, you're going to need to check the label to make sure that the voltage matches the acceptable input range for your Arduino model. And this range is going to be different on the R3 and the R4. The R3 can accept a voltage between 7 and 12 volts. On the R4, this has been expanded to 6 to 24 volts. So you have a wider range of power adapters that are going to work with the R4, whereas you risk damaging the R3 with those higher voltages. 
to figure out the voltage of your adapter, you need to look at the label and look for the output. So I have two different adapters here. We can see this one on the left has an output of nine volts with up to 650 milliamps. And this one on the right has an output of 12 volts with an output of up to half an amp or 500 milliamps. So both of these would be in the range to work with either of these Arduino models. The other thing you need to be careful about and check is that it is a center positive plug. So this little symbol here, if I can try and get the camera to focus, shows that the plus sign or positive symbol is connected to the center of the plug and the minus sign or negative symbol is the outside of the plug. So if you look closely at the plug, there's gonna be a metal connector on the inside, that's the positive, and then this jacket around the outside is the negative. So you want to make sure you have a center positive plug and not a center negative plug. And again, you should see that symbol on the label if you look closely. So make sure you have a center positive plug with the correct size that physically fits into your Arduino and that the voltage is in the acceptable range for your model. Again, seven to 12 volts for the R3, six to 24 volts for the R4, and you should be good to go. One advantage here is that these wires are typically longer and more flexible than a USB cable. So depending on where you want to mount your Arduino project, that might give you a few more options. And these adapters can also give you more current than the USB port, depending on their rating. So the voltage from the barrel jack goes through something called a voltage regulator on the Arduino. And that is what's going to convert that higher voltage, for example, in the seven to 12 or six to 24 volt range, down to the regulated five volts that the Arduino's IO pins operate at. And that onboard voltage regulator has a current limit of one amp. So unlike the 500 milliamp fuse on the USB port, in theory, you could get up to one amp out of the five volt pin on the Arduino if you are powering it through the barrel jack instead of USB. However, you are not guaranteed to get an amp because it depends on the rating of your wall adapter. For example, remember when we looked at this one, this one is only rated to a maximum current of half an amp. So just because I am powering it through the barrel jack doesn't mean I would get a full amp in this case. I am limited by the current that can be supplied by the power supply, in this case, 500 milliamps. What if you want to have a mobile project, for example, something that moves around and does not need to be tethered to a wall outlet? That is where we're going to start talking about batteries and the snap connector. So here we have a nine volt battery. And remember nine volts is going to be within the range accepted by the voltage regulator for either the R3 or the R4. There's a snap connector on one end that snaps onto the battery and then a barrel plug on the other end, which again is center positive and matches the dimensions for the Arduino barrel jack. So you can just plug that in just like you would with the wall adapter. And now you have a mobile Arduino project that does not need to be plugged into a wall outlet. But again, if you are doing something with lots of motors, like a robot that drives around, this nine volt battery is going to drain very, very fast. So this would be okay for some longer battery life for something like an LED that's just blinking intermittently or things that aren't on all the time. But if you're trying to do something with a lot of motors that drives around a lot, those motors are gonna draw a lot of current and even though this battery can provide enough voltage, the battery is going to die very quickly. So next, we are finally going to get to talking about external battery packs for powering motors with your projects. One common way to do this is to have separate power for your Arduino and your motors. If you check out some links in the description, you will see a lot of robotics projects on the Science Buddies website that use this approach, where you have a 9-volt battery with a barrel jack connector that is plugged into your Arduino, so this is providing power to your Arduino, but then you can use a separate battery pack, like a four by AA battery pack or a lithium ion battery that will power the motors. And if you wire the circuit correctly, the nine volt battery will only provide power to the Arduino, but all of the current through the motors will come from the bigger battery pack. So you will get much longer battery life for your robot because this larger battery pack is powering the motors and not much current is being drawn from the nine volt because it is only powering the Arduino board itself and not the rest of the circuitry. I am not going to show how to do that in this video because we have a couple other detailed tutorials about how to control and power motors with an Arduino. You can find those linked in the description of this video. It is possible, however, to do this with a single external battery, not requiring the nine volt. So to show you how to do that, we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look at the Arduino's pins. 
If we zoom in and look at the power pins on the Arduino, we will see a V-in pin. And when you are powering the Arduino through the barrel jack, for example, if I plug in this 9 volt battery, then the voltage from the barrel jack is going to be available on that pin. So in this case, I would get 9 volts out from that pin. But it is also possible to power the Arduino using that pin as an input if you are not using the barrel jack. So for example, here I have a lithium ion battery with a voltage of 7.4 volts. If I take the negative wire from that battery and plug it into one of the Arduino's ground pins and take the positive wire and plug it into the Arduino's V-in pin, then it is also possible to power the Arduino like that. You can see these wires aren't really long enough, they're not staying in the pins very well, but if I hold them in place, the Arduino does power on. The thing you have to be careful about here, and there is a warning on this on the official Arduino website, is that if you power the Arduino like this, there is no reverse polarity protection, meaning if I get these two wires reversed and accidentally plug the positive wire into ground, that can damage the Arduino board. So there is an advantage here because it lets me get down to a single battery, which can reduce weight if you're building something like a drone where weight matters a lot, then you don't need that second 9 volt battery to power the Arduino. But you have to remember to be careful when doing this because you don't want to damage your Arduino if you get those two wires reversed. You also, again, have to think about current and how your circuit is wired if you are powering external components like motors that draw a lot of current. If you are just going directly to the VIN pin like this, then that voltage is going to go to the onboard voltage regulator, which again will limit you to one amp through the five volt pin. But if you have the power connected elsewhere on your circuit, which again, I'm not gonna show in this video, but we have some other tutorials that will show you how to do that, such that the current from the motors comes directly from the battery and does not need to go through the Arduino first, then you can also connect the Arduino's VIN pin to that in parallel and power the Arduino separately without needing to get all the current for the motors from the Arduino. Again, not gonna show how to do that in this video, but if you check out the links in the description, we have a couple projects with the circuit diagram for that configuration. That was a lot of information, so let's do a recap. When you are first starting out, you can just power your Arduino with a USB cable that is plugged directly into your computer. But the type of USB cable you need will depend on the Arduino model you have and the type of USB port on your computer. When you're ready to expand to projects that aren't plugged into your computer all the time, but you want to use a different outlet, you can switch to either a USB charger or a wall adapter with a barrel plug, but you need to make sure that the voltage from the adapter is compatible with your Arduino model, as well as the physical dimensions of the plug. If you are ready to switch to a mobile project that is not plugged into a wall outlet all the time, you can use a snap connector with a nine volt battery and a barrel plug, but this isn't going to provide enough current to power things like motors for mobile robots for a long period of time. To do that, you're going to need an external battery pack like this 4xAA battery pack or this lithium ion battery. And again, we have additional tutorials linked in the description of this video that show you how to connect those to power motors. For more Arduino tutorials and science projects you can do using an Arduino, check out the links in the description and visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.